In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible tells us that the heavens declare the glory of God. The Bible also tells us that God placed mankind on the earth to bring him glory and to enjoy fellowship with God forever. The Bible says that God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. But through willful rebellion, sin corrupted and defiled what God had called good. It destroyed the perfect relationship that was once enjoyed between God and man. As a result, death entered the world and the whole of creation, the universe above, the earth below and humankind came under God's curse. Mankind became so corrupt that just over 1600 years after God created the first man, he destroyed all but eight people through a worldwide flood during the time of Noah. Despite God's cleansing of the earth through the flood, like a disease, sin began to spread once again over the earth. The Bible tells us that even the created world around us is subject to corruption because of the curse of sin. The forces of nature themselves bringing chaos and destruction to a vulnerable world. And under the influence of the prince of this world, and because of mankind's sinful nature, Cain is still finding ways to kill Abel. Selfishness, greed, godlessness and willful rebellion tighten their grip on this world and leave their destructive mark on every soul, threatening our very existence on earth. Therefore, it should not come as a surprise to us that God has declared in His Word that He will once again destroy the world that He created. God speaks through His Word in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. We are not given the details, but we are told that the day is coming. The Bible says that while God will never destroy the world again by flood, He will destroy it and the events leading up to it will be as they were in the time of Noah. Jesus said in Matthew 24 verses 36 to 39, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Not only will this world be destroyed, but God declares in Revelation 20.12 that a day is coming when small and great will stand before the judgment seat of God, and the books will be opened. A little later in verse 15 we read, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. In Ephesians 5 and verse 6 we read, 
Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Knowing therefore that the day of the Lord is coming, what should we be doing? The Apostle Paul's answer is clear. Speaking on the topic of the coming judgment, Paul writes to the Corinthian church and he says this, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. So how do we persuade people of their need to get right with God before this day comes? The answer is that we preach the gospel and that we leave it up to the Holy Spirit of God to convict about sin, righteousness and judgment. In his final instructions to his disciples, Jesus said in Mark 16 verse 15, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The word gospel means good news. And God has given us good news to share. Romans 5 and verse 8 says that the good news is that Jesus died for sinners. The gospel can be summed up in those four words. Jesus died for sinners. God is holy and His justice demands that sin be paid for. Yet in His mercy, He has paid for it Himself in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus was sent in love for this world by God the Father. Although Jesus was fully God, without giving up His divine nature, He came from heaven to earth and took on human flesh. He lived and suffered in this life as we do, but without sin. Then, through His death on the cross, Jesus drank the full cup of the wrath of God against mankind's sin and became a curse for us, being rejected by God the Father. But because Jesus was sinless, and because his death satisfied the justice of God against sin, God raised him back to life and received Jesus into heaven, from where he will one day come to judge the living and the dead. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, that God hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, by repentance toward God and faith in Jesus Christ, and by the grace of God, sinners can escape the deserved wrath of God on a coming day of judgment and know the free gift of forgiveness and everlasting life. The Bible says, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of Him who preaches the gospel of peace. The Bible also tells us that there is a connection between the preaching of this gospel and the return of Jesus Christ. We read in Matthew 24 and verse 14, For this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come.